Hello, uh, dear students, uh, this is your teacher, Professor Nirmal Kumar Swain, uh, Department of Library and Information Science, MD University, Rotak. So, in this module, we'll discuss about, uh, uh, discuss about uh, unethical principles, uh, part of academic integrity and uh, uh, plagiarism issues. What are those uh, unethical practices, unethical principles um, in, in research unless and until uh, we maintain uh, integrity in our research or then how uh, the research um, uh, becomes futile and uh, gradually it doesn't contribute to the developmental aspect of a nation. So begins with uh, data, data world, you know, data world. So data world, you must have heard what is data and what is uh, how data, uh, you know, plays a pivotal role or vital role in uh, doing research because uh, data of any uh, data is uh, is there always in uh, in your research. Uh, so there is also although a myth uh, in uh, among you know prevails in among the uh, doctoral uh, candidates, doctoral students of different streams or different uh, uh, disciplines like sometimes uh, the science uh, discipline students say uh, the humanities they don't have data or they uh, without data they do it's not that data of a different nature the science and do science of, uh, uh, the discipline students they do have a data of a different nature social science do have uh, their own data uh, of their nature and uh, humanities do have okay we will discuss in this series uh, one by one uh, now the question is that uh, how data um, uh, works unless and data uh, data speaks your research speaks on the basis of data suppose you speaks uh, you, you know in a, uh, in an abstract way we, in, in a, it seems that you are speaking in air so it, can, it cannot be considered as a research suppose you find out or you arrive at a point or you give some findings on the basis of on the basis of available uh, data then it can be considered uh, okay it can be uh, considered uh, uh, it can be considered as uh, uh, research i'm citing an example from social science especially discipline of library and information science so it can give you a uh, you know general background of general background of uh, what is uh, uh, the nature of data Suppose uh, someone is conducting a, a research or a survey that is uh, reading habits, reading habits of uh, reading habits of people of Haryana. Uh, Haryana is a big uh, state, and uh, you know the moment you say uh, research uh, reading habits, that means what uh, what does it implicate initially? Uh, that is uh, the people of Haryana. What do they read? What do they? What is their choice? When do they read? All these gamut of questions are in, in, involved in it. Okay. So in that case, suppose uh, you uh, you should uh, arrive at a point on the basis of your data collections. So data world, you know, you collect data, and how do you collect data? So that is up to the researcher that uh, whether you go and uh, get uh, get data from each and every, uh, you know. Um, uh, uh, citizen of uh, the the state, or uh, is it really uh, is it really um, uh, needed to co collect data from each and suppose a household? There are ten members. Do we really need uh, to get data from the entire household, or we can have uh, a representation of that household? So here it comes uh, data, you know, population and sample sampling techniques. You you all know that. Uh, but my, my question is that data speaks and data world. So unless and until uh, here it comes, suppose you represent don't actual data or actual data. What is actual data? What is supposed to be and some kind of methodology you should uh, you should maintain uh, and to collect data and to analyze those data, certain standard formulae or statistics. Then you arrive at a point and this is your findings. The moment you uh, receive, uh, I mean, uh, arrive at uh, the findings or the result. Uh, the result. Uh, so probably, uh, probably, uh, you uh, not necessary. Your result, your uh, findings should match with 
uh, someone else who conducted similar data in the state of Haryana or a particular district of Haryana or some other parts of India. It's not that. But your research would be actual or would be, would be a standard kind of research or if, if you follow the standard practices of research by maintaining uh, methodology, analysis part and uh, uh, whatever prescribed in textbooks or were the uh, research gurus uh, preaches uh, about research. Okay. So here it comes. But uh, why, uh, you know, our discussion is that how data, uh, you know, uh, if we don't follow ethical practices, we don't follow a kind of uh, integrity in our uh, research, what happens? I told you, it doesn't contribute uh, substantially um, uh, to the uh, world of research or to the uh, process of uh, academic development or uh, the national uh, development. Here three things comes, okay, three aspects come uh, in the in, uh, context of uh, data world or world of uh, data in research. One is data fraud, data fraud, uh, then, then is your uh, uh, data fabrication, uh, then sometimes we call it uh, plagiarism also. Although we find in, in internet in other books also, there are different kinds of uh, um, uh, misrepresentation, unethical practices of data. But in our lecture, in our next lecture, we'll discuss about uh, three types of data fraud or unethical practice of data. Um, one is data fraud, another is data fabrication, and third one is your uh, plagiarism. So gradually we'll discuss about whatever, uh, in detail rather, about this. Bye-bye.